The most important one is certainly the new web stencils template library that we are introducing in this release. It's a server-side script-based integration engine. The idea is you process HTML files, either in web broker or web server, and you merge into a template, into a skeleton, data that is available within the application itself. You can use it to build any modern website using any JavaScript library, any type of cascade style sheet, and basically any web technology. The idea is that you extract data in a RAS Studio server-side application, process and merge it with HTML. There are many template libraries out there. It's not a new technology, but it's the first time that a library like this is available directly in Rust Studio. One thing that we want to highlight is that this can be really a great foundation for building HTMX applications. Uh, it's a new library that is growing and very interesting. HTMX pages benefit from server-side code generation. They're really declarative in their approach compared to JavaScript-based libraries where you have JavaScript code that is more procedural than declarative. What you can see here is an example of a very nice HTMX application built with web stencils. I'll get to in a minute. What is a template library? It's a scripting engine that uses a specific syntax. It uses the add symbol to indicate special processing elements, blocks, variables, or, or keywords. And then it uses angle brackets to define a block of code. It also supports simple expressions. Let me just show you a very, very simple demo. In the code, you can have an object, in this case, this T simple object with a name and a value and you give it a name, uh, object2, and make this object available to the processor. In the HTML, you can have two different things. One is you can access to information like that at object2.name or at object2.value, or you can invoke access properties and operations within a conditional statement, that value below 10. This is conditional. The concept here is that that HTML snippet that you're seeing at the bottom will be visible if the value within that object is less than 10. Otherwise, that entire if block will be omitted and you'll only have the header without any HTML content. So not only you can replace values, but you can also have a logic that enables or disables sections of your HTML depending on actual data and logic within your Delphi or C++ builder application. How do you access the data? It can be RTTI base, as I was showing earlier, so object dot property. There is an on value event handler, which allows you for a lot of flexibility. So when you say add object dot value, you have an on value event handler that provides you as parameters, the string object, the string value, and up to you to do any processing you like. The idea you can register objects, you can register lists of objects, you can register entire data sets. And when you have a data set registered, you can navigate through the records using for each loop, like in this um, other small code snippet. In this case, I have a for each data set where data set is an object registered with the name data set. And then I access to some of the fields like company, country, city, state, and so forth. You can also define module variables that are available for all scripts in a, in a web module. Let me explain a little better the previous example. This is a web broker application. It has an action. The action allows you to associate a path slash list to some code that needs to be executed. The code to be executed is that action. So what we're doing here, we're opening a data set. We are registering that data set with the name data set. And then we are processing the file associated with this web stencil processor component. And in the file, there is the code that was right in the previous page for each data set, read some of the fields. This is what you do in a simple scenario. In more complex scenarios, both web broker and Rust server offer a way to do a direct mapping 
So associate a number of different URLs with a number of different files according to high level roles and logic. Before I go to the next slide and provide you a couple of more details, let's actually show quickly a demo in action. This is the demo I was actually showing earlier. The way there are a number of actions, each mapped to a different URL. There are a number of web stencil processor components, uh, for example, company list, which is associated with this company list HTML. There is the action event handler for company list, which is the code I was showing earlier. And then there is the HTML, which provides the skeleton of the page. Now, this is not a full complete page. The reason is that one of the features of HTML templates is that they allow you to separate the content of the page with the structure of the page. In this case, the structure is in the layout called base template, which is here. This is a standard bootstrap based page with some styles and other information that's not terribly important to look at now, a menu and so forth. And then in one location of the template says render body. So that means, oh, now let's add the actual specific page content here. You can have multiple templates and each page has a reference to one of the templates. The net result is an application that lets you open in the browser and get a list of companies. And then I'm not going to show you the code for each company to access to specific information. And also that if, if that's we were looking at earlier. Now let me cover a couple of more things quickly. We can really go in depth into all of the features of web stencils in this launch webinar. There is a query keyword to access any of the HTTP parameters. There is ability to add comments. There are if statement, including if not and if else options. There are two different syntax for, for each, for each object or the ability to define a local variable name for the objects in the list. This allows you to create nested for each loops. There is the ability to import a code snippet within any existing template and file and the ability to scaffolding, which is something I'm going to omit for now. In terms of template, as I was showing earlier, you can indicate in a file, which is the layout, which is the template. Within the template, you can indicate where to place the actual content. There is the ability to inject extra headers in the template. And of course, the ability to indicate where those extra headers need to be rendered. Rather, headers originally go within the header section of your HTML. Last thing I want to mention, there are two main components. There is a web stencils processor, allows you to process an individual file, as I was showing earlier but there's also an engine component that allows you to define a web dispatch mapping with web broker or rat server, allows you to define the default directory for all of the files and define mapping logic from incoming URLs into the actual files to be used for processing. With this, let me show you a final nicer demo of web stencils. This demo is built as a console app uh, and this demo would work both on Windows and Linux. So what I need to do is actually start the server and now I can hook a browser. Once you connect to this demo, you can see a number of different use case scenarios. It's a very extensive uh, demo. What I'm only going to focus is the examples. This is an example of a very large page with a thousand records from randomly generated customers. And you can see it's very fast. It's also very fast to generate the page, merging the thousand records into the HTML. The other demo, this demo shows a list of tasks where you create can create a new task and add it to the list. You can delete, fairly complete, nice looking, web application built completely using HMX and using web stencils on the server. Mm -hmm.